Greetings. Today we're going to learn how to balance chemical equations. The thing here that you have to remember is that chemical equations are a little tricky at first. However, with plenty of practice, you will be a guru at this. You will get really good at it and then you'll feel really good about yourself and knowledgeable. It's uh, like the little story of the guy that goes up uh, on the street and asks the other guy, hey, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? And this is in New York City. And the guy says, practice, practice, practice. Well, of course, you know that Carnegie Hall is a very famous hall where master musicians like, would like to play. And you have to get there by practice, practice, practice. All right, so it's the same thing with for balancing equations. So let's go ahead and start our work. So here's our goal. We want to balance the equations by inspection. That means simply by looking at it, by just inspecting, trial and error, putting a number, changing a number, and it works. Eventually, it works. You just have to be patient and stay with it. Alright, so there are some things that you want to remember. Balancing an equation, and what does this mean? Well, you want to make it so that both sides of the equation are equal in the number of atoms. The reactant side and the product side. You have to have the same number of reactants and the same number of products. Well, how are we counting? Well, we count the number of atoms on each side of each type. Why? Because there's a law called the law of conservation of matter. You probably learned this in physics last year, and basically that law says that matter can neither be created nor destroyed. So if matter cannot be created or destroyed, well, you can't create atoms and you can't destroy them, so they can't poof disappear or you can't create new ones, so when a chemical reaction happens, when you start out, you start with a certain number of atoms of each type, and you'll end up with the same number of atoms, no matter what the reaction is. The only thing that's happening during a chemical reaction is rearranging of these atoms. Hey up there, how you doing today? Well, what I want to do here is to show you visually what balancing equations is all about. I have a hydrogen molecule and I have an oxygen molecule. Remember these guys are diatomics. So this is my, this is how I get my exercise all the time. But this is, represents two hydrogens and this represents two oxygen, making up one, uh, one molecule of oxygen and one molecule of hydrogen. However, this is not balanced because I want to produce water. See, Mickey Mouse, the little mouse ears, and oxygen. But this is not a balanced equation because I have two hydrogens over here, two hydrogens over here, I have two oxygens here, and I have only one oxygen over here. So that's definitely not balanced at all. So what can I do? Well, I've got to fix this. First thing I want to do is to have, this is my reactant side, this is my product side. They have to be equal. There have to be equal numbers of atoms here. So starting with oxygen, I have two oxygen atoms and one oxygen atom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring another water molecule over here to give me another oxygen. But now I have my oxygens are balanced. That's one. This represents one molecule of oxygen and this represents two molecules of water. Here are the two molecules of water. I have two oxygens and two oxygens and I have two and four hydrogens this is not balanced over here. So what I must do, I must put a two here and add another molecule of hydrogen. Now my totals are correct. I have a total of four hydrogens. The whites are the hydrogens. Four hydrogens over here, two oxygens here, two oxygens here. So what happened in this chemical reaction? 
We did not change the number of atoms at all, but we have changed the rearrangement. So we rearranged the molecules in a different form, starting out with hydrogen, oxygen, producing water. 2H2 plus 1O2 produce two molecules of H2O. That's it. Type. Why? Because there's a law called the law of conservation of matter. And you probably learned this in physics last year. And basically, that law says that matter can neither be created nor destroyed. So if matter cannot be created or destroyed, well, you can't create atoms and you can't destroy them. So they can't poof, disappear, or you can't create new ones. So when a chemical reaction happens, when you start out, you start with a certain number of atoms of each type, and you'll end up with the same number of atoms, no matter what the reaction is. The only thing that's happening during a chemical reaction is rearranging of these atoms. There are a few things that you must remember. Tricks of the trade. First of all, to balance an equation, you always use a coefficient. Do not touch subscripts. Subscripts are part of the formulas. You already learned how to place those correctly based on charges, etc. However, here we're not touching the subscripts. We're only touching coefficients. We're only going to deal with the coefficients. That's the big number in front of each one of the formulas. Secondly, um, well, we already mentioned the formulas. Just change coefficients. Same thing. All right, so we're going to try it, and we're going to start out with this simple equation, and the equation simply says Na plus Cl2 yields NaCl. Easy equation, sodium plus chlorine gas produces sodium chloride. Most of the time, you will have little uh, phase or uh, a, uh, most of the time you will have a little letter to indicate whether it's a solid, a liquid, or a gas. But in this case, I didn't include it. I didn't want to complicate the issue. So here we have sodium. We're going to do by inspection. Later on, I'm going to show you a trick for a little more complex reactions. But here we have one sodium and one sodium. So reactant and product side are okay with the sodium. Chlorine, you have two chlorines on this side and one chlorine on this side. So that means I have to adjust the coefficient. I have to make it a 2 here. So if I have a 2 over here, I have two chlorines, two chlorines over here, two sodiums, and now I have to adjust my coefficients here. You can place a 1 here, however, it is not really necessary because it is understood. All right, for our next one, we have a combustion reaction. We're going to talk about this a little later on, but let's just balance the equation um, simply, we're going to say, we're going to start out with carbons, and there are some tricks that I'm going to tell you about. One of them right now, keep the oxygens and hydrogens for last. Always, always, always. So over here, I'm going to start with carbon, one carbon, one carbon. We are good. We don't have to do anything in that uh, for now. We have four hydrogens over here, and we have two hydrogens over here. So I ask myself, what coefficient could I multiply by in order to come out with a 4, which is what I want? So I'm going to have a 2 there. Now I have 2 times 2, 4 hydrogens, 4 hydrogens on this side. The only thing left to balance are my oxygens. So oxygen over here, 2 of them. This coefficient stands for everything after it, 2 oxygens. That's the total of 4 oxygens. I only have two here. I ask myself again, what number can I multiply that by to get me four? And that is a two. So that's all balanced and it's all good. Moving right along. All right, let's try these by inspection as well. Potassium. One potassium over here, one potassium over here. You know what? We're going to try this one in a different way. We're going to be a little bit more specific here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write my, this is my reactant. Oops. Can't write in black, can I? All right. These are my reactants. And these are my products. O2 
over here, I'm going to balance potassium, I am going to balance chlorines, and I'm going to balance oxygen. And I'm going to leave oxygen for last. I start out with one potassium on the reactant side and one potassium on the product side. How many chlorines do I have over here? I have one chlorine on the reactant side and one chlorine on the product side. Now, I'm going to look at my oxygens. I have three oxygens over here, and I have two oxygens over here. And I ask myself, okay, this is not going to work. I have three over here and two over here, so I have to find a common multiple. My common multiple of three and two is going to be six. So, therefore, I'm going to have to multiply this number times a number that will give me six. So, three times two is six. That works out. I'm going to cross that off. Now I have six on this side. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say, all right, so I have two over here, but that's not going to work because now I have six and I want a six over here. Or what number can I multiply two by to get me a six? So I'm going to say this is going to be a three and that gives me a total of six. All right, so now is my equation balance? Yes. Or is it? Not quite, because I have forgotten that once I changed this over here, I had to change my numbers over here. So K2, so I'm going to put a 2 here. Are my chlorines balanced now? Yes, they are. Is my oxygen balanced now? Yes, they are. So this number becomes a 2. This number becomes a 2. Oops, I'm moving that. I'm sorry. 2. Chlorine becomes a 2. Chlorine becomes a 2, and everything's balanced. All right. Let's try this one down here. We don't have to do all this if you don't want, because it's a pretty simple equation. So we're going to say 1 and A, 1 and A, 2 bromines, 1 bromine. We're going to place a 2 over here. Now, my NA got messed up, so I got to fix it. Come back over here, place a 2 here. My equation's balanced. All right. Ha! Huh, we're getting a little more complicated here. So I'm going to show you a little trick. All right, so this trick may, may be helpful to you. And, uh, and you can use it or not use it, depending on what, if you feel so inclined, you can just list all of the elements and not separate them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle any polyatomic ions that I have. So I have a polyatomic ion here, and I'm going to circle my polyatomic ions here, okay? I have SO4, remember that 4 is part of the polyatomic ion, I'm not going to touch it, it's 1 SO4, but here there's a parenthesis in the SO4, so there are 3 SO4s. So I'm going to balance my SO4s, I, want, I have 3 circles over here, and I have 1 circle over here, so I'm going to put a 3 here. All right. So I can go down and list my elements now, or I can simply continue by inspection. Let's do this. Well, both, both methods are by inspection, but I, the other one demands a little bit more work. But you can, if you visually need to do it, go ahead and uh, work with me as I'm doing this. All right, so I have two Fe's over here, two irons over here. That seems to be okay. My SO4s are balanced. I'm not going to touch those. I have... 3 times 2, 6 hydrogens over here, and only 2 over here. What number do I need to make this, an, uh, to make this a 6? So I'm going to place a 3 here, and now I have 3 oxygens over here, and 3 oxygens over here, and everything seems to be balanced. We could put a 1 here if we want, but it's not necessary. So everything is balanced there. All right, CHO. What does that mean? CHO2 means that you are going to encounter a special type of reaction. These are combustion reactions. Combustion reactions are reactions that involve a fuel, oxygen, which is necessary for burning anything, and they both produce the same, they, any of these, I'm sorry, not both, but any of these reactions produce the same thing. They produce CO2 and water. So, Here's my fuel, C2H6, 
This is oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water. All combustion reactions yield the same product. By the way, we read this arrow as yields. It's a yield sign. It, it, we can also say produces. But the normal, the, the common way to say it is yields. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to write show down like this. I'm going to start with carbon. How many carbons over here? I have two carbons. How many carbons over here? I have one carbon. How many hydrogens do I have over here? I have six hydrogens. How many hydrogens do I have over here? I have two hydrogens. How many oxygens do I have here? I have two oxygens. And how many oxygens do I have over here? I have three oxygens. Now, I'm going to start with my carbons. Cho, do it in that order. And Cho 2, I'm going to explain what that 2 means. Now, since I have 2 over here, I want 2 over here. So I'm going to take that away and I'm going to put a 2 there. Notice that I didn't put a line and I did that on purpose. Sometimes the reactions are not going to have lines. Teachers sometimes prefer to have the lines to, to see what coefficient students write. But sometimes you'll just have a space. And I did that for this reaction. All right, so I, I'm going to put a 2 here. My carbons are done. We are balanced. Now I'm going to say, all right, next thing I'm going to do are my hydrogens. Hydrogen, there are six hydrogens over here and there's two hydrogens over here. So what number can I multiply this by to get the same number as I have on my reactant side? I want a six, so therefore I'm going to place a three here so that I have that balance. So three times two is six, my hydrogens are balanced. Next, I'm going to my oxygens, but I encounter a problem. What's the problem? Well, I have a two and a three. Even number, odd number. There's no possible way, no matter what I do over here, that I'm going to get an odd number. Really can't be done. But I can find a common multiple. Can, can I change this? Can I change that? No, I cannot change this because everything will be thrown off. So what do I do in this case? That's where Cho 2 comes in. What do we do? We're going to multiply everything by 2. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to say 4 and 6 and 1 is 2. And now I should be able to balance. So now I have 2 times 2, 4 carbons. Over here I have 4 carbons. Back away here, I have 6 times 2 is 12 carbon, I'm sorry, 12 hydrogens. And over here, I have 2 times 6, 12 hydrogens. What do we do now? All right? So if I change all of this, and I know over here, let's count how many, carb, how many oxygens I have now. I have 4 times 2, that's 8, and... 6 times 2, I'm sorry, 6 times 1, because there's only 1, plus 6, that is equal to 14. So I'm going to write the number 14 right here, because that's what I already have. And now I've got to figure out a way to get this to 14. What can I do? I'm going to multiply that number times 7, and 7 times 2 is 14. Problem solved. Now I have a little challenge for you. It's your turn. I want you to try these, pause, solve the problem, and then, and only then, unpause and go to the next slide. There are your answers. I feel like fan of light. All right, so that's it. That's it for today. And I hope that this podcast was useful to you in getting you started in balancing equations. Have a good one. See you in class.